last week, we finished up with this statement here. This is something I'd like to see you adopt into your life, okay? Adapt it to your marriage, your life, and your home. Because we need these guardrails in our life. We want to live a safe life. It says, for as for me and my house, we're going to set up guardrails in our home. We're going to set up guardrails in our lives, in our finances, in our business, on our job that will keep me from going over the edge into thou shalt not stop. Now, I want you to think about this, okay? And, and I, I, I won't be discreet here, but listen to me carefully. The, the young lady that, that uh, ends up having a child out of wedlock, I'm not kicking people that have had that, okay? You understand this. But they've had a child out of wedlock. Did you know that that that, that if they would have kept their guard well up instead, they'd never found themselves in the thou shalt not stop, okay? Uh, uh, it's almost as become where believers will live as close to sin as they can without sinning. We said that last week is that nobody ever falls over the bluff that walk 25 feet away from the edge, okay? Uh, you, you have to quit flirting with disaster if you don't want to become a disaster. I, I, listen to me carefully. Young person, I, even, yeah, let's start right there, okay? Uh, a teenage young man. Can I tell you something? No one ever gets up in the morning and says, as a teenager, my goal is to grow up and be a drunk. No one ever does that, okay? So so how do you keep from being a drunk? You don't drink, you don't go even test it, you don't taste it, you don't go try to you don't try to go, well, you know, I think I can beat the odds. Listen to me carefully, is I had relatives, uncle, um, uh, that were drunks, a uh, drunk because, but he wouldn't have been a drunk if he would have stayed within the boundaries that God gave us, okay? And uh, and so don't flirt with disaster and you won't become a disaster. You, you have to quit playing on the edge of sin if you don't want to fall off the edge into sin, okay? That makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, you know, if uh, if you uh, decide in your mind, you know, I, I, I'm, going, I'm going to put some uh, um, guide guardrails up in my devices and say covenant eyes or some type of accountability for yourself. And and uh, you know what I happen is, is then when you begin to lean toward the edge, you know, of looking at something you shouldn't look at, you know, this it's going to save your marriage if you do this. Now, so many young men are giving themselves to looking at pornography, pornography, pornography before they get married, and and what a mess that is made of their their marriage after they got married. They thought, oh, you know, I I'm addicted to this, and once I get married, it's going to solve my problem. It didn't solve your problem. It doesn't solve your problem. It, you, listen, you can eat guardrails in your life. You understand that? I know you do is you have to quit toying with something questionable if you don't want to live a questionable life, okay? Does that make sense? So so quit toying with things that are questionable, okay? Um, uh, you say, well, but it's not sin, but it's questionable, okay? It's questionable. I, I can't emphasize this enough for adult men. Maybe we're on the job and, and we're working around uh, ladies and and uh, while we work around some guys that are, you know, they're they're off the bat, they're off the res reservation in their in their sin, and and uh, listen, I listen, you can't run with them, you can't you can't become uh, where you're toying around with something that's questionable, or you're going to end up being questionable. You have to stop messing around with the prospects of sin, or you'll become messed up in sin. That's what's going to happen. You, you, can't, you can't run with the prospects, the possibilities of sin, or you're going to get messed up in sin. And I can't emphasize this enough that you and I, we build these guardrails up in our lives, okay? Remember this, most people who do not want standards in their life or who view guardrails as something that limits them or restricts them from fun are people who really, who, who really want to go over the edge. They want to. They there's something inside. Them they're saying it's not. They'll yell at me. Oh, you're a legalist. Listen to me. Listen to me. It's they want to go over the edge. They want to go experience that. I can't stop that. But I can encourage you to understand. You need guardrails. They would. They they would like to commit sin. They desire to do that thing that is wrong, and that tells you everything. Listen to me. When you don't want guardrails in your life, you don't want standards in your life. You don't want something to limit you from going off into something that, that is questionable. You know what your problem is? You're not right with the Lord. You want to commit the sin, and your love for Jesus has diminished. 
So I encourage you, keep the guardrails up and establish them. For watching this uh, video series with Pastor Smith on guardrails. Guardrails are oftentimes that unnoticed thing on the side of the road, and and they appear to be unnecessary. They're they're not uh, there for a reason until we actually need them. And guardrails will do this for you in your life. They're going to take and they're going to help you uh, guide your marriage. They're going to help you uh, uh, keep your marriage on the right track. Guardrails are going to help you in your finances. If you live within the the guardrails that you set up for them, they're going to keep them going in the right direction. Guardrails will do this for you in your friendships. They will help you stay in that safe zone with your friendships. I want to encourage you to do this. Really stay focused as you go through this journey with Pastor Smith on the guardrails of life. Whatever those guardrails are, establish the guardrails, stay within them, and make sure you set them far enough away from the edge so you don't fall over.